Yes, there we are. So uh, yeah, this is the, the the second presentation. This is actually where it all started with uh, also for sort of the wind tunnel study that you uh, just uh, just saw. So the Delft Meteorite Lab is actually a sort of a virtual collection of meteorites that uh, that I've been creating at uh, at TU Delft. It started uh, a couple of years ago when when I started uh, sort of digitizing the Dutch meteorites as sort of a geo heritage project, and it has now evolved more into uh, sort of a virtual collection that we can use with a with a variety of applications. And I want to show you a couple of these case studies uh, uh, today. Now, the most important one uh, that, that I would like to talk about is how we can use these digital models of, of meteorites in education and in outreach. Now, if we look at, for example, in geosciences, uh, I don't know if there are people here with a geology background or, or might have had that during their, uh, their studies, but um, a rock practicum is a very, uh, very cool, but also a very, uh, very, very valuable um, a way of, of learning about materials and about properties. So the, the fact that you can hold an object in your hands you know, move it around, uh, inspect it with, uh, you know, a magnifying uh, lens gives you a lot of insight into sort of the, the properties. And, and the same, I think, holds true if we can involve these materials in our education, in our teaching of planetary geosciences. So involving the materials to illustrate to students, uh, you know, the, the, the key properties of, of meteorites, their parent bodies, and um, uh, how, they, uh, how they are formed. So especially during the, the COVID pandemic, uh, that's more or less when I started uh, with my new uh, post at TU Delft uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we started thinking about, okay, how can we try to involve these materials in our education, especially because, you know, we have to do a lot of uh, remote teaching. And uh, given the fact that our um, um, teaching, our, our student population is, uh, is very sizable, uh, we, uh, we wanted to know whether it was actually possible to, to come up with a sort of a digital uh, online blended learning format that could, could help us with that. Now, the key concept is, of course, if we if we use these photorealistic 3D models, um, uh, is that we can still have this key learning um, uh, approach where you can you know have an object, you can rotate it around. And that, that's really, I think, the key property of, of why a 3D model in a virtual environment would work in terms of conveying information. So it, is, it, it conveys much more information than just a static 2D photo because you can turn it around, because you can zoom in, manipulate it, and follow your, your curiosity uh, to see where that uh, where that takes you. Um, so with this this idea in mind, we uh, we also saw some broader uh, possibilities to integrate these meteorite materials and uh, also these uh, impact breccias and other um, 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 sort of um, uh, planetary analogs into uh, to to our uh, teaching. But of course, there's also some some room for uh, for outreach activities. Now, how do we do this? Um, uh, basically, it starts, of course, with the, the real uh, the real object. So, uh, so I've taken the example of the uh, Buke and Waterland meteorite again with photogrammetry, basically uh, an imaging process that I'll uh, illustrate shortly. Uh, we can create a digital twin, a 3D model, and this is what we can host online in an environment. In our case, this is uh, Sketchfab, uh, where we can uh, sort of uh, uh, offer these high fidelity, high resolution 3D models that uh, people uh, all across the world can use if they if they want to. Um, in our case, we focused uh, specifically on structure for motion photogrammetry, so really taking images to generate with the right software a 3D model because it's a, it's a very accessible approach and it's uh, it's something that doesn't require a lot of uh, very expensive hardware. So it's potentially within reach to uh, a lot of amateurs, uh, collectors, but also a lot of uh, a lot of teachers. So I think it's a, it's a very uh, sort of um, um, uh, interesting way to have this democratization of of technology to uh, to achieve these uh, these collections. Now, after a couple of years of trying, we end up uh, with uh, with this setup. So we have a sort of a, a smartphone controlled uh, turning table on top of which we place uh, the meteorite uh, that sort of automatically triggers uh, the camera with a with a ring light. And then in this particular scene, it's taking images from you know all the way around the object, and then also under different viewing angles. And what that gives us is basically a very large data set of images, and then through the right software. Uh, such as uh, edgy self, ed, ed, edgy self uh, meta shape, uh, we can you know convert those images through these photogrammetry uh, um, uh, processing algorithms into these point clouds, which are basically images uh, B and C. And then if we have a, a three D shape model, uh, we can use the images to generate a photorealistic high resolution uh, texture, as we call it. Uh, so basically, it's uh, it's an image draped over the exterior of the three D model that gives you a very beautiful, almost uh, as real looking rock as the, the thing that you could hold in your own hand. Um, well, in the, the overall process, we've, all, of course, also looked into different different techniques. Uh, so these are uh, some comparisons uh, of uh, 3D models. In this case, uh, it was a comparison about how accurate these, these shapes are. So 
in these color maps, you can see the so-called so Hausdorff distance. It's basically a comparison between three, uh, two 3D models. And the distance basically gives you the distance, uh, the error between these, these meshes. So you can see in, in figure number A, this is an example of, uh, of structured light scanning where we needed to match two halves of the scan to each other. Um, and you can see that in one part where the, the very red colors are, uh, we have a very large uh, error uh, of close to a, to a millimeter uh, because of this mismatch between uh, the, 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 uh, the halves. So you can see that not all techniques are as accurate or as uh, straightforward as, as others. And then the other one, uh, the, the figure number B, that's actually a laser scanned object so that we did not have a very beautiful um, photographic texture, but you can see that the quality of these um, uh, sort of um, uh, models, they, they are on par with these uh, photogrammetry techniques as well. Of course, if we have a nice model, we have the images, what do we do with it? Well, we can of course save them on the hard disk. That's a bit boring. So uh, we go to sort of a virtual environment, in this case, uh, Sketchfab. And this is sort of an, uh, an online platform that's uh, being used for a large variety of, uh, of applications for, uh, well, basically um, uh, showcasing three models from uh, the gaming industry. Um, and, and since COVID, it has also been uh, sort of the platform by choice uh, for a lot of educators to, uh, to host um, um, different types of rocks, minerals, uh, archaeological uh, artifacts, and so on. So, so basically, the environment is, uh, is very suitable for this type of work. And for me, what really stands out is that you can actually, if you have the 3D model, you can annotate it. So you can put a small bullet on it, and you can click on those, and you can actually get a pop-up with additional information or additional data that you, that you want to share. So this actually has sort of the role that I would have during a real uh, sort of rock pr practicum uh, that I would point to a, a specific feature. And in that case, you know, you get this sort of a very long story for me and the enthusiastic stuff and so on. But in this case, you can do it yourself and click on it and get the same type of information. So it's a, it's a very nice way how we can sort of move this type of information into the digital realm and have people explore this by, them, by themselves. So the collection at the moment is uh, sort of divided into the, well, sort of five sub-collections. Uh, so we have a, a collection that is containing a number of meteorites. We have the Dutch meteorites also uh, available in the, in the Dutch language. Um, we have impact rocks. Uh, we also have a, a sizable collection of meteor wrongs, and I'll get to that later on why that's the case, and a collection of uh, um, uh, sort of unlabeled uh, um, uh, objects. These can be meteorites or meteor wrongs that we use in our, in, in our education. So depending on sort of the, uh, the protocol or the, the program, whether it's education, uh, research or outreach, you can see that you know uh, parts of uh, a particular uh, subcollection can be uh, can be used. Now in our education, we uh, we try to set up uh, sort of an uh, interactive uh, uh, activity. Uh, for us, it's it's sort of key that we can try to inform the students about certain traits that link up with um, well, basically planet formation, but also how materials or objects change because they are flying through the atmosphere, getting ablated, um, and uh, and end up uh, here on on ground. So. For our bachelor's and master's program, we came up with an, uh, an activity, um, which uh, well totals about 170 students yearly uh, that get to interact with these uh, with these models, and they're based on uh, sort of a workflow uh, did, well developed by uh, a Brazilian team by uh, Guedes and and co-workers, and they they came up with a well sort of a diagram of uh, you know starting with an object and looking into different properties that are diagnostic for terrestrial materials or potentially meteorites. Uh, to uh, to come up with a potential classification. Um, in our case, we uh, refurbished it a bit uh, to fit within uh, our teaching materials. But in this case, it's basically giving us sort of a workflow uh, where we can uh, sort of um, uh, guide our uh, students into these assessments and uh, and processes. Now, I'll give a bit of a, of a flavor of how they respond to uh, to this uh, this type of activity. Uh, I think the general take home message of this uh, sort of uh, um, uh, survey that we did is that they really liked the 3D models and they were very accessible and they could actually learn from it. At the same time, even though they've never handled meteorites uh, uh, themselves, they still really much appreciate the fact that they can handle real meteorites. So you can see that there is still a lot of uh, fascination and uh, sort of merit in, in having these mat materials available in a uh, educational or in a teaching environment. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's a very very interesting uh, um, sort of uh, uh, uptake in the in the uh, student community. Now, just to uh, give you a bit of an idea of uh, what other types of purposes uh, you can use these three models for, so these are some cases uh, that we've uh, worked on or that that I've been using them for in the past. So we've used them in chroma key presentations where they could actually be animated when you were giving a t sort of a lecture. 
Uh, we've set up these activities with the workflow that we had, uh, for example, at uh, Naturalis, but also in activities with the Meteor section. Uh, so where we can basically use this sort of meet your right, meet your wrong type of activity, but then in, in sort of an outreach setting, uh, we've generated uh, 3D uh, replicas, for example, for Space Expo, one of the, the leading space uh, museums in the Netherlands. And, uh, well, I think it had uh, more than uh, 10,000 visitors during uh, an activity that ran across, I think, the, the, the Christmas holidays. And so it was a very large, uh, large effect. Uh, we're generating a, uh, a 3D model for, uh, for some other uh, events. And uh, this morning, uh, we got sort of the front page picture uh, you can see over there with uh, the Utrecht meteorites. This year, it's 180 years ago that it impacted, and the Historical Association of Utrecht, uh, they do these city walks and stories, and uh, they, they featured one of the, of the models in this, uh, in this case. Um, there are, of course, uh, also some interesting future applications um, in terms of the science. Uh, so we've talked about in the previous uh, lecture about the aerodynamics, uh, the Rechmachlipt uh, population, so really the, the in, and sort of analysis of, of the, the micro topography of the surface of a meteorite is something that's uh, quite interesting. We have a post from that as well, uh, so be sure to check that out. Um, and of course, there are a variety of other applications that you can come up with uh, where you can actually use these 3D uh, models. Um, of course, looking towards the future, uh, we have this dream or dot on the horizon where we, where, where we want to go to the Dutch Meteorite Lab, uh, basically covering the entire meteorite taxonomy using the meteorites that we have available uh, at the Naturalis uh, collection, but also other uh, meteorite collections at Utrecht and, and other uh, institutes, um, and basically um, adding information to it uh, to make this uh, more accessible to uh, the community at large. Um, and one of the ideas is that we want to set up sort of a, a, an assessment help tool uh, to, uh, well, basically classify objects that people find. Uh, so I don't know uh, how your email yeah, email box is uh, uh, evolving, but we typically get uh, 150 emails yearly, if it's not more, uh, with people that are reporting potential meteorite finds. Uh, so equipping the, the public with uh, the tools and the means to, uh, to do these assessments themselves is something that we can potentially do, again, with the benefit of having these three models to, uh, well, hopefully uh, sort of uh, filter away these slacks and other types of man-made uh, and natural uh, materials. So to wrap up, um, the key uh, message I think is that, you know, structure for motion photogrammetry is a very accessible tool that you can use yourself also with the right uh, camera and with uh, the right software to make these models of your own meteorites. And there's a large um, uh, application domain from education to science and everything in between. Uh, but I think one of the key points is that it's a very nice way that, you know, these objects that we have in collections that are being stored in these uh, very well um, um, uh, sort of uh, controlled environments uh, to, to preserve their scientific merits, that we can still sort of um, uh, unlock them to uh, the general public and really share the stories of uh, the astrogeological heritage that we have in our countries and uh, in Europe uh, altogether. So hopefully with that sort of um, um, uh, outlook on life of, uh, of meteorites, uh, I... Uh, like to wrap up. Before we do that, please grab your phone and give it a try yourself to uh, try model. Thank you.